Good day everyone. I'd like to talk about my case study on good posture syndrome. To begin, here's the case. A 19-year-old female presented with anemia. Two months later, she reported symptoms of pulmonary hemorrhage. At that point, she had renal insufficiency and was immediately hospitalized. On the test done, the patient showed increased WBC and a significantly low RBC. The increased WBC is a response of the body and the low RBC is in relation to good posture. The kidney is damaged. Thus, erythropoietin production is affected. This will affect the normal erythropoiesis. In addition, the patient urine examination showed an increased protein and RBC. The basement glomerulus is damaged. The damage leads to filtration issues. Thus, there is hematuria and there is proteinuria. Patient chest x-ray also revealed hemorrhage in the lungs and present patches. In good posture syndrome, the organ that the autoantibody attacks are the lungs and the kidneys. The alveoli will be damaged. Alveoli is where there's exchange between air and blood. The damage leads to cough hemophysis and restrictive lung disease. Serologic tests revealed numerous anti-GBM antibodies. So, what is good pasture syndrome? An overview. Good pasture syndrome, or also known as antiglomerular basement membrane, anti-GBM disease, is a rare pulmonary renal syndrome that results from autoantibody-mediated destruction of alveolar and glomerular basement membranes. It is defined by the triad of pulmonary hemorrhage, glomerulonephritis, and circulating anti-GBM antibodies. Ernest Good Pasture dis first described this disorder in 1919. He reported a case of pulmonary hemorrhage and glomerulonephritis during an influenza epidemic. In 1955, Parkin described three cases of lung hemorrhage and nephritis that occurred in the absence of arteritis. In 1958, Stanton and Tang reported a series of young men with pulmonary hemorrhage and glomerulonephritis similar to Good Pasture's original description. Definition of terms Good Pasture syndrome is a rare autoimmune disease in which antibodies attack the basement membrane in lungs and kidneys, leading to bleeding from the lungs and kidney failure. Hemophysis, the coughing up of blood or blood-stained mucus from the bronchi, larynx, trachea, or lungs. Hematuria, the presence of blood in the person's urine. Glomerulonephritis, inflammation of the glomeruli, which are structures in your kidneys that are made up of tiny blood vessels. So how does the good pasture syndrome affects the body? Let's go to the pathophysiology. Good pasture syndrome or anti-GBM disease is an autoimmune disorder characterized by autoantibodies directed against the glomerular or alveolar basement membrane. The autoantibodies bind to the reactive epitopes in the basement membranes and activate the complement cascade, resulting in tissue injury. This is a classic type 2 reaction in the gel and combs classification of antigen-antibody reaction. The binding of antibodies can be visualized as the linear deposition of immunoglobulin along the glomerular basement membrane and, less commonly, the alveolar basement membranes by direct immunofluorescent techniques. The basement membranes are complex structures that support layers of endothelium and epithelium. The principal component of basement membrane is type 4 collagen, which acts as a support structure and is composed of building blocks that are linked end-to-end. -end. The building blocks are composed of three alpha subunits of collagen, which form a triple helix. Para dali na to masabdan, Let's start by thinking about the basement membrane. 
which is a thin sheath-like layer of tissue made of protein that keeps the epithelium stuck firmly to the actual organ. The basement membrane is made up of various proteins, but the major one is collagen. And since basement membrane exists throughout every organ system, it's no wonder that collagen is the most abundant protein in human body. Collagen has a triple helix structure composed of three separate chains na ako na mentioned earlier. ga intertwined siya like braided hair. Each of the chains can be of one of the six types, named alpha 1 through alpha 6. And the most common form of collagen found in the basement membrane is collagen type 4 na ako po na mention gaina. Kaning collagen type 4 is made by mixing and matching the 6 alpha chains. Now, these chains can either be 3, 4, and 5, alpha 1, alpha 1, and alpha 2, or alpha 5, alpha 5, and alpha 6, and so on. So, this alpha 3, 4, and 5 is the most common collagen found in basement membranes of kidneys and the lungs. Now, in good pasture syndrome, autoantibodies bind to the alpha 3 chain of the collagen. This show a type 2 hypersensitive reaction. The autoantibody is usually IgG type and has the capacity to activate the complement system. So, kaning complement system kay set of proteins ni siya that help in the elimination of foreign substances. When the FAB portion will attach to the alpha 3 chain and then kaning C1 of the complement proteins bind to the FC portion of the IgG, this bound C1 is now activated and mag start na ni siya engage sa uban kanang iyang igan yung uban members sa complement family gikan C2 pa dong C9 some of these are activated by being cleaved or chopped by an enzyme kaning na chop nga fragments nga C3A C4A and C5A act as a chemotactic agents meaning they attract certain cells pareho ni neutrophils so, si neutrophils will release enzymes like peroxidase, myroperoxidase, proteinase 3. Kani sila, kay oxygen radicals nga ginaguba si basement membrane, si endothelium o si organ. Epidemiology Anti-GBM disease is an uncommon disorder. The incidence of anti-GBM disease is estimated to be 0.5 to 1.8 cases per million per year in both European white and Asian populations. It is responsible for 1 to 5 percent of all types of glomerulonephritis and for 10 to 20 percent of crescentic glomerulonephritis. Racial, sexual, and age-related differences in incidence. Anti-GBM disease occurs more commonly in white people than in black people, but is also maybe more common in certain ethnic groups such as the Maoris of New Zealand. The age distribution is bimodal, 20 to 30 years and 60 to 70 years. The prevalence of the disease is higher in men in the younger age group and women in the older age subgroup. A subgroup of patients is double positive for anti-GBN antibodies and anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. The peak age incidence of this subgroup is 60 to 70 years with a male predominance. For the signs and symptoms, symptoms include the following. Constitutional symptoms like malice, chills and fever, arthralgias, may precede or develop concurrently with pulmonary or renal manifestations. Hemophysis is presenting symptoms when the disease affects the lungs. The level of hemophysis may vary and in a small percentage of patients may be absent. Other pulmonary symptoms include cough, dyspnea, and shortness of breath. Massive pulmonary hemorrhage leading to respiratory failure may occur. Chest pain is present in less than half of patients. 
renal manifestation include hematuria, edema, high blood pressure, and eventually uremia. Significant anemia may result from persistent intrapulmonary bleed. Diagnostic workup When the diagnosis remains in doubt, renal biopsy is the best method for detecting anti-GBM antibodies in tissues. Patients in whom the diagnosis of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage remains uncertain should undergo diagnostic bronchoscopy. So, aside sa renal biopsy, nga best method for detecting good posture syndrome, na po iuban test or methods nga pwede helpful para pag-diagnose sa good posture syndrome. Number one is urinalysis and blood studies. Number two is anti-GBM antibody testing. Third is chest radiograph. Fourth, pulmonary function testing. Five, biopsy. And last, immunofluorescence stain. In the past, good posture syndrome was fatal. But today, prompt treatment with corticosteroids, immunosuppressive agents, and plasmapheresis or filtering out the plasma has improved the prognosis of the patient. So, always remember, early diagnosis gives better prognosis. So, that will be all. Thank you.